before I start off doing this video, I just want to say thank you so so much for 5,000 subscribers. Uh, it went really fast up and 100,000 views on my uh, manga page video. That's insane to me. So thank you so much for that. Alright, so under my manga page video and under other videos, I got a lot of questions that were repeating themselves and the, a lot of the same stuff. So I thought I'd just answer it in... Uh, this video so it's a little quicker and I also thought because I got a lot of questions about my art supplies and the stuff I was using in the video etc and I uh, thought I'd clarify this in this video while I also show you all my art supplies I'm using so first off I'm gonna start by reading some of the comments that I did not respond to yet uh, I thought that manga arts could only use ink dots, hatches, etc. and not graphite to make the screen tones. No, they do not use dots and um, they're not made with ink per se. It's uh, basically screen tones. That is what they look like and it's kind of a sticker. You peel it off, you stick it on your paper, it's transparent, cut it out and there you have your little dots. So I also have some little dots here and you just put it on the paper. That's how it works. But I did explain this in my video. A lot of people are asking me, how did I do this? How did I do that? Well, how did I use the sponges? Or what was that tape, etc. And that can be extremely easily um, answered by just going to my video on how to draw manga pages with screen, how to make your own screen tones. I made a video about that because I was getting a lot of questions and uh, no one really even watched it, so I don't know. You should go and watch that. I'm gonna put it in the info card. Uh, a lot of people ask me if my ma if the manga I was gonna publish it or what from what story it was, and that's really simple to answer. The one from the first one, first manga page drawing is from this manga here. This is in German, but it's Arina no Tane in English. You can look it up on Amazon and it's basically uh, Arina Tanemura talking about her life and little things like there's little doodles in there. It's really cute. Um, if you're interested in the artist, I recommend this. I'm a really big fan of her so I got this but otherwise I wouldn't say it's really a necessary piece to have in your collection because it's not really a manga as you would know it. There's not really any uh, amazing art in there. It's mostly just small doodles and little caricatures. There was a chapter where she was talking about her favorite mangas and that's where I got the page from. So this was the original page and um, I just got that one and copied that one because I thought it was really cute with the two girls and they were talking about that they were in love and I thought it was really cute to do that with my two main characters that are not in the same story. So that was the first manga page. Um, but none of the manga pages I drew, they were all from different mangas and I always put in where and from what manga it is. You always have to watch the videos till the very end. And I know that there was writing in the end of my first manga page video and I feel like people didn't watch until the very end because of that. But you should really make sure to watch until it's completely done so you know what's going on. Uh, then there was someone who asked me, can you tell me the name of each instrument you use please? Exactly why I'm not gonna make a comment telling you every single thing because that would be way too long and also it's easier to just show you guys what it is and tell you what it's called so I'm just gonna do that instead. Uh, again, what is the name? I always put the name in it. Oh, there were uh, a couple people asking if I was gonna publish a manga and uh, tell me that if I were to make my own manga they would totally read it and I really really appreciate that. It's really a huge compliment for me so I will make my own manga. I am currently in the making of it, the story and everything that has to go on behind the scenes and you'll know about this whole thing. Uh, let me know if you want me to do, uh, I was thinking about doing a little type of, of vlog kind of thing but more of uh, doing little clips and throwing them together of me struggling because it's a lot of struggle and there's not really any speed paint to do on these things so if you want me to drop a vlog like that I can also do that on my second channel or I can put it on here. I, I have no problem with doing that if you want me to. Can you use a normal A4 paper and what kind of pen did you use? No, well you can. I did for my earlier work of manga pages I used normal printer paper, A4 printer paper. Actual manga page paper is not on A4, 
it's actually on B4. I think that's a little bigger. I didn't, you know, I could have said, okay, I want it to be as traditional as possible. I want to get some B4 paper. However, that would have meant that I would not have been able to scan my work and that was not what I wanted. I wanted to be able to scan it with a normal scanner. Otherwise, I don't have anything else. So I decided against that and I'm using normal A4. Uh, however, using normal printer paper is not really a option. I wouldn't say you should use it unless you are going for really thick printer paper because there's also very thin printer paper, but I wouldn't necessarily go under 80 grams. A lot of people ask me what 80 grams means. It means how the, it shows you how thick the paper is. Basic short explanation. It explains how short, uh, how thick. So the more gram it has, the better saying printer paper. I would not use aquarelle paper. I'll go for a very smooth surface, something that doesn't absorb too much because you don't want the ink to get absorbed. You want it to lay on the paper. That's why I always recommend using um, multimedia paper, very smooth paper. I am using one in 120 grams. Printer paper is around 80 grams, so you know a little bit what the difference is there. There were also a lot of people commenting Spanish things and I I don't know why because I don't speak Spanish. I don't know what that means. So um, if you're asking me a question in Spanish, not it's useless because I have no idea what that means. So why is everyone sketching with colored pencil? Isn't that hard to rub away? Um, of course, it's really hard to erase and that is not the point. You don't really want it to erase it. Basically, you put on a really rough sketch and then you can immediately go on with the pencil on top. So basically, you have the guidelines, for example, a lot of people do just guidelines in blue, in light blue, and then they go over with their pencil, and then they go on with the ink, and then they erase what they can, and when once it's scanned in actual manga making, traditional manga making, when you scan the paper in black and white, the blue lines are completely invisible to the scanner. So that's why people will use blue pencil and because it's very light against the dark graphite and you can't really you know it doesn't really matter but I always go like mm, using it not using it you don't have to use it um, if you you have two options you can either sketch directly onto your drawing paper or you can sketch on a different piece of paper and I like to sketch on different piece of paper on printer paper because then if I fuck something up, I can just throw that out and start all over again. If I uh, screw my good paper up, um, I'm gonna be really pissed at myself because it's gonna be ruined. So I rather ruin the printer paper and then I use my light pad to look at it. So to, to trace the artwork directly in ink. So my finished product is as clean as it can be. And because when I erase, I always tend to bunch up the paper and fold it. It's not, it's not pretty when I erase. Well, I guess I don't have enough internet to load more stuff, so we're gonna leave it at that. And I'm gonna show you all my art supplies. So I say we start in a chronological order um, what I start with and where it ends with all the things I do. So this is my little, I don't know, thingy. Um, it's a kid's thing. It does the job, it's fine. So, in here, what we're having here is spare lead, a uh, permanent marker, a, uh, what is it called? Paper blending tool, a blending tool. Um, a normal lead pencil, a pencil extender, a black, very thin ball pen, two erasable glitter pens. I think they're glitter. They don't really work too much. A white pen. Um, I should put this aside because this is more important and I don't use it immediately. And two water brushes. Then we have a big brush to dust away eraser stuff and um, another spare lead in 07 and this is 05. All right. And then we come to this one, which is my little case here, it has my ruler in, which should be here, it's a little better. My scissors, that should be in here, tiny little scissors. Then with what I sketch, 
um, very important. These are the only things I use when I sketch at the moment. I just want to say that um, whatever I use right now might change in the future, so it really doesn't matter what I tell you right now. <laughs> But I've used these pencils for a long time and I'm still very happy with them, so. Um, you, you can see in my older videos, I think, uh, here and then I sketch with mechanical pencil and then with normal pencil, mechanical, normal, mm, and that was my entire life because everyone sketches with mechanical pencil, so I'm gonna go with mechanical, you know, it's finer lines, but then I just don't like mechanical pencils because you have to press on the, on the bottom here. And then the lead always broke off for me, and it's just so annoying. And then I go to normal lead, like wooden pencil, and then same thing happens. The point always breaks off, I have to sharpen it, it's really dull, No, you can't see anything because it's just a big blob of lead because it's so dull. It's too short, Oh, I just... And then I found this pencil in the store, I was like, oh nice, a new pencil, I'm just gonna buy this one. There was no price on it, and I was like, whatever, how expensive can it be? It was about five bucks. I was like, Jesus Christ, is this made of gold or something? And um, let me tell you what it kind of is, yeah. Um, basically, this is the Faber-Castell Polymatic in 07. What this pencil can do, why is, why is this so special, is basically has this little piece of plastic here in the front, right? And when I push this down, the lead comes out again once I release. So basically what this does is that when, when you draw and the lead is a little bit too far down, this will press it down and then the lead will come out. And you will never have to worry about breaking off a piece, you will never have to worry about clicking on the back, it's just a perfect thing. So then I wanted to get one in smaller because, you know, 07 is pretty big. This is the Gripmatic in 05. The ink has completely rubbed off so you can't read it anymore. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice, nice pencil. It has an eraser on the back that you can twist out like that, but kind of used up all of it, so... Yeah, it's really, really nice. I love these, and I've never. Barbara Castell should totally sponsor me because of the way I've been advertising these pencils and other stuff from Barbara Castell. Really, just hit me up, Barbara Castell. Next up, we have a eraser by uh, who would have thought Barbara Castell. It's the Grip 2001 PVC free eraser. Um, it's a great eraser, it's really hard, it doesn't flip around, it doesn't break, it doesn't make a lot of dust. I just really, really like this eraser. I feel like I have talked about this already, so I'm not gonna go into detail about every single thing. I just really, really love this eraser. You can go into detail if you erase flat, you just go with the side and then you can go really detailed. Of course, this is not really pointy at the moment, but if you take care of it, it will be. Now there I have a really old one, but they still have these in stores. It's uh, the Faber-Castell Perfection uh, 4058, I believe, I don't know. Um, it's also an eraser, it's a very small one in the form of a pencil. It makes really small flakes and is kind of porous but I think it's still a really good eraser for really small areas however I am waiting on another very small eraser and I forgot what it's called so I can't really tell you uh, uh, it's a mono I think it's a mono pen eraser kind of thing where you can like like a mechanical pencil but it's an eraser um, we have a sharpener here that I never use because I use a mechanical pencil but I still have it with me because you never know some tape I have to tape a lot of things here and there and up here I just have a bunch of my old like Instagram link things and whatever moving on though uh, I have this clipboard this clipboard is the best thing because I always use this now again I have my little thing up here for my Instagram if you don't follow me on Instagram you should totally do that right now okay 
it's always in the corner of my video, so you better... Okay, so I got these clips. Um, I can clip down some drawing stuff, or clip... Or uh, throw it away. Great move, okay. And then I made this little... You know, you were in school at least once, right? So, drawing in school is really annoying because you were drawing on a table, and then you're always like, oh, I need something to put under my drawing. So I made something that will always be like that. So I put a couple pieces of paper together and then I put little tape corners on it. So it's like sticky side, sticky side. And then just put together like that and then stuck onto it like that. Can you see that? I, I, it's really easy. Just so that I can put my paper in it like this because um, with my arms I always roll up the paper and then it's gross looking so that's why I have this and um, works like a charm it's really nice and handy and then under that I have some clean pieces of paper it's also really good because it doesn't dent this paper and doesn't make it icky and gross so I can only recommend it and then on the board I also put like an edge here because it was kind of rough and I was I didn't want splinters I also put corners on this one so that I can put the printer paper in there it's really really nice like that it serves me extremely well so I bought two <laughs> behind here we have some scrap pieces of paper with some scrap drawings and some thing that might be my next speed paint who will know and I'm definitely gonna make prints of this it's a uh, Inuyasha fan art and why is this just chilling out here. Okay, so that is my little whatever the hell that is. When I trace, I use this thing. Of, I have talked about this a lot. <sighs> Guys, I think a lot of people don't understand that when you subscribe to someone on YouTube, they have older videos. You need to watch those videos as well because otherwise you might miss something and then you ask questions about something that they already answered. So, this is the Huon L4S light pad. I saw this on YouTube, a review, and I was like, oh, holy shit, this is amazing. Because I was using a huge, huge box and that my dad made with just the lamp underneath. You could barely see anything through it because the, the plexiglass was so milky and it's just, it was a pain. And so here we have something that is miraculous. You can take it everywhere. It is connected by a micro USB to USB. You get a really, and I'm saying a really long cable, so it costs about 50 bucks. This, this is not the original cable, this is my phone charger, so. Okay, so here we are. You click on it once and it turns on. See these waves? I'm sorry. It's white. It's very well distributed throughout the entire piece. And here comes the cool thing. You can make the light go lighter and darker and it is insane. Sorry about the waves again. And then you just click on it once again and it just turns off. And I'm just gonna show you how well you can look through. Sorry if my face was in the shot just now. You can look through it amazingly well. Look at that. And you can just trace your artwork and it's just so nice. I'm just saying. So, of course, these are two pieces of print paper. There's actual reviews on YouTube. Just search for it. But I can recommend this if you have 50 bucks to spare and you want to draw manga, you need a light tablet. So, seriously. I also did a video on how to make your own um, light pad, light table thing. So, if you haven't watched that, then what are you damn waiting for? Like, come on. So after that, I will use I will I will use my light pad with um, when I color something. I'm gonna use this. This is just some um, brown brown. This is just some white water watercolor paper. Uh, some white watercolor paper. Um, it is from a French store. Does not matter where I got this from. This is the cheapest paper I could find. This is the brand. If you want to know, it's just a store in my in my little village. So honestly, it does not matter where this is from. This is 180 grams, A4, blah blah blah, white paper. So I use this for my all my watercolor uh, drawings. It's pretty nice. I haven't really used anything better yet, so I can't really say. But this one is real, it's really nice. It's 
it's not bad at all. So maybe it will change in the future and I'll up you, update you on that. But for now, I've been using this for a long time and I'm uh, very happy with it. So that's what I use in all of my A4 drawings. And then I also have... This is the paper I use for my manga pages. And this is what I always recommend, multimedia paper. So you can draw on this with, as you can see, pencils, watercolors, and ink. And there's a bug. Hey bug, hello, what are you doing? How did you even get here? I'm sorry. Stop freaking out. Oh my god. Okay, just sit down. Oh my god, it's so cute. It's like a night butterfly or whatever they're called, but a moth. I guess it's called a moth, but it's got like kind of green wings. It's really pretty. Don't freak out, honey. It's okay. You can just watch my little thing. Okay, you'll be the bug is behind the scenes of my video. It's fine. So I bought this in a really cheap store, and it is very smooth white paper. It's really loud. I'm really sorry if you cannot hear me at all. But as you can see, it's really smooth white paper. And that's why I chose it for my manga pages. I would not use this for watercolors because it would wrinkle up, but I am I think it's great for manga pages because it's not too thick. It's 120 grams per square meter. It's absolutely nice and I've got this in a small store. Once again, just look for multimedia paper white 120 grams. So it doesn't matter what brand exactly I'm using, all that matters is the outcome of the project and you don't have to buy all the same brands as I am unless of course it's the pencils because you can't really get them from anywhere else but perfect stuff so and once I have my paper ready I have two options either I'm drawing a manga page or I'm coloring something once at, when I'm coloring I use brown ink I don't know if you can really tell, because it's really dark brown, but I use brown ink. Um, to be specific, it's sepia ink, and I'm using these inks. Now, I've talked about these a lot in the comments, people are asking me, blah, blah, blah. These are German inks. Uh, in my first manga page video, um, I was using the ink and it went bad. The black ink was ba was gone bad, I don't know what happened. It was just really slimy and weird, I don't know. But I didn't have anything else and I couldn't get anything else and I had to pull out videos because I didn't want to miss a week. So I was still using this ratchet as ink. Um, someone pointed it out. Only one person pointed it out, so I'm really... <laughs> I'm glad no one noticed. But uh, if you think, oh my god, I'm not gonna buy this ink, it's crap, I guarantee you it's one of the best inks on the market. This dye dies. This dries very it's extremely black. The black one is extremely black. It it's kind of shiny. It's really beautiful ink. It does not rub away when you erase, which is one of the most important things if you don't have a light pad. You need to get yourself ink that does not rub away when you erase. It flows extremely well. It's really nice ink. It's a really big tub and I guarantee you this is going to last you a long time if you only do a couple drawings with it and not do 50 manga pages a day. And if you don't spill it all over your carpet like I did once. Um, I'm just saying this is the first tub of ink I have that I have not spilled half of it yet because that always happened. And when you get these inks, you can see here, when you get these inks, the first thing that happens is that one drop goes down the side and just stains the ticket. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know. It's just how it is. But you can get these off the internet. Just a look for the title. It's called Rower and Klinger. Here is the title and or the name, the brand in better. You can see here that's what they're called. Just pause and type this off and you can see where to get this. I think you can get this in the US when you get it on Amazon. Otherwise you need to see. Uh, I can't really... Maybe in the future I will do like a comparing ink videos but uh, right now I just don't have any money to buy other inks. So this is the ink I use and in sepia and in black and as I said my other one went bad. Here's a little life hack for you. Instead of putting your thing into the ink tub because not only is that kind of annoying but not only is that really annoying and you never know where is the ink but also sustains your thing because you're like where is the ink and well it was a little too high than you would have thought so I can really recommend you putting it somewhere in something else 
So here I have my little ink coffin. Uh, I made this out of paper mache, blah, blah, blah. No one cares about how I made this. Okay. So in here I have some of this ink. Uh, in here I have my black ink. I'm just going to put the coffin to the side. That's really cute. I love coffins. Okay, it's really cute. Whatever. So I have black ink in here. I'm just going to put this like this. And we all cross fingers that it's not going to spill. And then in this one, in this one is sepia. Woo! Interesting. Okay, put these in with like a syringe thing. I'm gonna just draw it out, put it in, draw, put it blah, blah, until it's full, and then you can dip your pen in there. Gucci. If this goes bad because of bacteria you put in there because you're putting in your little feather, um, your your G pen or whatever you're using, it's okay because this tiny bit of ink. You can just throw that out down the drain, whatever. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know. Are you supposed to put it down the drain? I, I guess. Where would you put it otherwise? I don't know. But if you go in there, you might mess up your ink. That's all I'm saying. Out of, uh, what is it called? Knowledge? I don't know. Uh, these are all makeup things. You just have to clean them out. This was a Maybelline New York. I think this was like gel eyeliner thing. And this was something else. And keep these in a not so hot, darker place, like in a drawer. Uh, in here we have a cotton pad, I don't know why. We have a softer eraser. This is the Fabri-Castell Dust Free Eraser. I use this if I sketch something and then I ink it and then I have to erase it because it's a softer eraser so it doesn't tear up the paper or anything. Um, in here we have a couple of ink. Things. This is my ink pen. This is a G pen. Now I know what you're thinking, but I thought G pens always come in a nib, and they do. You're a very smart person. I can see that. This is what your G pen will come in. This is the smallest package you can get. There's three in there. One of them I already screwed up. The other one is in here, and that's the spare third one. Uh, when I bought these, by the way, I thought, oh my god, three? I'm never gonna use three. Uh, yeah, you will. <laughs> Um, I will always recommend you getting a G pen. This is what the mangakas use everywhere. Um, it's the best pen. It varies in lines, but a lot of them always also use a Maru pen or a Saji pen. This is just a DIY thing I did. I made a video on this. Um, it's not really. It's really long if you want to sit through it and have fun, but. Um, at the end, I, I, I ended up using something else, so... Uh, in here we have... Okay, just saying, I'm the DIY artist, okay? Here we have a eyeliner that I bought because it had a very nice brush tip. So I just went and bought it and I cleaned out the eyeliner. And then I pulled out... You can pull out this carefully. Now there's a fly flying into my lamp. Okay, yeah, just sit down. Or fly away. Oh my god, not my face. Okay, can you stop? You're disturbing my video. How did I make a dot on my face? Oh, damn. Ink is just. So I just filled this up with. <laughs> I just filled this up with ink. With uh, the same ink as here. Okay, fly, we get it. Stop annoying us. I'm trying to film here, okay? And a few other eyeliner pencils that I have a little thing blah blah. I um fine liner in 0.4. I don't recommend using fine liners like this because those are the kind that when you draw they make a ball at the uh, at the, the, the start and they make a ball at the end of the line and I absolutely hate that so I just I uh, recently just got this pen. I have not really used it yet, but I think it is time to try that out. I have no spare piece of paper anywhere. Right yes, my weird ass calendar that I bought that I'm never gonna use because who uses this kind of stuff? Okay, it's amazing. Can you see it making a ball at the end and on the front? No, yeah, me neither. So, this is what I'm gonna be using. It is the I think it's like a, it just says touch. And then it does it just says ching ching ching. I cannot read Japanese. And then it says more Japanese. And um, oh, it's a Pentel pen, made in Japan. Okay, okay, okay. 
touch pen tell. So after I ink something, let's say I want to make a color drawing. Okay, let's go with colored. That was weird. Cotton pieces flying everywhere. To make an inked drawing, I had multiple choices of brushes. However, I recently went and got myself these brushes. They're really new. They're from Pentel, just like the black one was. And they're the new Sable brushes. Now, I have quickly used these for... What did I even draw? I don't remember. But, I don't know, if you watch my old drawing videos, you can see me use this IKEA brush that I also made a video about. Um, you can see me use this brush a lot and it always has the problem that whenever I draw something, the tip goes really flat and then I draw out of the lines, every single line, okay? So I got these three. They are tape around them because the body of the brushes were so small I could barely hold them. It's really annoying. These are the Colorix brushes. They're the same brand as my inks. They are made before the inks. However, they are the same thing that happens with every single brush like that is that when it comes in the packaging, it's all very nice and pointy, and once you use it once, it is not anymore. So, I need something very pointy and detailed, and not something like this flat. Look at that. If I just spread this out, look at how flat it just goes. Like, I cannot do anything with these. Well, I can, but you know, they don't hold as much water, also, so. I wanted to go out and get myself a Japanese calligraphy brush. Oh, hold on. Uh, if you didn't know, I am vegan. So this is a real hair brush. I got this before I went vegan. I would never have gotten this uh, afterwards. However, I thought this was gonna be a great thing, you know, when I got this. It's not. I don't know how people use this because it is real hair. And once it's wet, I don't know if you have ever had wet hair. I assume you have hair goes in a direction when you when it's wet especially when we were kids and in the swimming pool we would play with our like braids or whatever and hair and the hair just goes to one side so when you're drawing something and the brush just stays you're pushing down the brush right because you're drawing and then the brush just, just stays like that it's really annoying so I don't know about you but I don't really like that so I very rarely use it and I would not recommend getting it not only because it's actual animal hair and it's not being taken nicely so let's just say that so I have my brushes and to color my stuff we have the tub um or box or whatever you want to call it with all my inks in it this is my magical tub box whatever you want to call it in here we have all my colorix inks beautiful I have the two beginner sets if you want me to make a really good review on these inks I can totally do that and then I have my pearl medium that my uh, dear sister bought for me as a little gift I put all the things on the top myself I mixed my own red and then we have my two Winsor and Newton inks deep red and Viridian for coloring something in like making an ink darker I use lamp black stylex creative uh, Corel gouache paint kind of stuff again super cheap paint from the dollar store so it doesn't really matter so this is what I use to color all my drawings it's pretty much just with ink to mix everything I use this one I got this on Aliexpress this is what I use to mix my paints and then I use these three. This is to um, clean my brushes. This is for spare water. Uh, I don't know what this is for, honestly. But it's in here. So uh, another one of those black little tubs. <coughs> my voice just went away. This is only for skin color. Uh, yes, I use blue and pink for skin colors. Um, I'm gonna do a tutorial on skin colors, just let me know if you want one. And this is just for blacks because so it doesn't mix around with color because you can really see, see here, I already screwed up with some green, but um, this is only for black paint so that it doesn't mix up with any other colors. And here's a little compartment for the pearl medium. For skin color, I have mixed my own 
whenever this will be empty, I will make a tutorial on how to mix your own skin color. But oh my god. I just got so scared, I'm really sorry. But this will last me a little bit. So, mixed my own skin color. Um, with my art, you see me use a lot of white little dots, little effects. For that, I use this one. This is the Signo Uniball pen in white. It's a very nice pen. Um, I'm really glad. Grail. I'm really glad I have this one. Uh, I've been using it for years and now everyone's using it so you can really tell it's a good pen. For other work I'm using a this one, Correction Fluid. It's just white out basically. And then I'm also, recently I discovered that you can see that in my mermaid video. If you haven't watched that, I'm just... I'm using this white ink from Colorex again and then I will open this. And I'll go in with a dropper. Let me just take this. I'll go in with a dropper and I'll take some ink and then I would put out as much as I can so it doesn't like drip out. And like if I do this, there's not a lot coming out. And then I just go over my paper and I just press really fast like that. And that makes these little splotches. It doesn't make my fingers dirty because a lot of people put a paintbrush and then they do this, but it makes your finger extremely dirty and ink like that. It's gonna stay on your paper, uh, on your finger a long time and it's not really fun. So, And I tend to touch everything with my hands, so I have white ink on my finger. Honey, I'm gonna have it on my face, so. And um, that brings us to that. I'm not gonna go into detail about my box here because I already have and no one needs to see this twice and it's a torture and this video is long enough already so this is my box and um this is the video where i talk about my box so just click here and then you will know everything about how to make your own screen tone so check out that video okay so we're gonna do the outro with my fl the fly on my arm oh it flew away okay I feel like it should be named Charlie. I think Charlie is an artist because he's checking out all the art supplies right now. Interesting, right? Yeah, I know. It's a cool... Yeah. Really nice. <laughs> Subscribe to see more of Charlie. And, um... If he doesn't die because he's flying to the lamp. <laughs> and, uh, of me drawing manga. Check out my other videos and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Don't forget to click the bell because apparently you have to do that now. And I'll see you next week. And let me know if you want me to do these art vlog things. I can just start doing them and vlog a little bit more because you don't really get to see a lot and I don't post that much on Instagram so I think that would be a cool idea if I just film little clips here and there and upload that. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!